Well, today I thought I'd have a go at doing a triptych, a three picture painting. It's going to be abstract because I'm still learning about abstract art and I'm going to be using a nice lot of colours as well. I want the background to be a gold copper colour, but I'm not going to mix it in to start with. I want to see how well this comes out like this and then paint it over it and see what sort of effect this gives. And this is going to be the background for the actual picture itself. And then I'm going to go over that once these three are dry and then put the remainder of the colours on. I'm also going to go down each one of the sides as well. I've got these brushes that are thin brushes, but they're nice and wide and I think they work really well. And that's come out quite pretty. I'm going to put a little bit more gold through it in places. I mean, it might not show at the end, but at least it will be there. I know it's there. And I've gone off at an angle as well. So the whole thing is going off at an angle like that with the brush marks. And I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other two canvases. There we go, that's the bases done. I think they've come out really, really pretty. I like those. And what I'm going to do now is leave those dry. I might give them a quick dry with a hairdryer and then I'll show you what else I'm going to do. Well, these are nice and dry now and I'm really pleased with how they've come out. But I don't want these to move about. So what I'm going to do is add some blue tack to the back of these canvases like this and then stick that to my working surface so that when I'm painting on them hopefully they're not going to move around too much and that way I can get a consistent approach without keeping pushing the canvas to one side turn that over like that put that in place push that down yeah that's quite solid I'm also going to be using the Arteza iridescent paints because I think with the iridescent background of this and the iridescent paints it's going to look brilliant. I might be wrong. We will see. I'm no expert at abstract painting, but I love it so much that I want to keep learning and doing it. So stick along with me. What I'm doing is putting some of this iridescent black on and I'm just putting a little bit on and then blending it through with the brush. Now there isn't much in this brush and that's what's allowed me to blend it through. I have kind of an idea what I want to do in my head, but it's actually getting it down onto the canvas as well that I like uh, in a way that I like that I find I struggle with I do tend to overwork my abstract paintings as well and that's something that I've really got to try not to do I'm just using a bit of plastic wrap here to give it a little bit of texture and I do play with some textures throughout this although I do tend to stick with one texture at the end I can't remember for the life of me what these colors were I should have written them down so I apologize for that and as you know being colorblind I can't tell you what colors they are now on the screen <laughs> but I'm sure most of you can tell and I'm just using my little painting knives now to go in and blend this out and then as I'm seeing bits that aren't quite balanced or don't have the look that I'm going for then I can alter them and that is the nice thing about abstract paint I suppose there is no real correct way of doing anything what I do like about these palette knives is that I'm able to blend stuff in without it going too muddy or a muddy colour, as I'm doing here with these two colours. Now, I'm not going to talk all the way through this. I'm going to put a little bit of bits of music. And obviously, I'm not working at this speed. Oh, if only I could. I have speeded this up so it doesn't feel so long and drawn out for you. Where you can see that I've actually decided to use another little fan brush because I wondered what that sort of texture that would give but I think I went in too heavy with it to start with maybe if I'd have left it a little bit of a drier brush and gone in with the drier brush rather than putting the paint directly on the canvas it may have given a really nice effect and I will try that out again and for me it's all about trying I've made a couple of pieces now that I really do enjoy and I love sharing them with you because the feedback that you give me on my abstract painting is brilliant. It really is useful. And I'm learning a lot. I'm learning so much. So hopefully one day I will get there where I'm really pleased with the piece. Some people love the work that I've done as well. And I've sold a couple of pieces, which is really <laughs> amazes me because I sold a piece that I thought was completely ugly a while back. But the people who bought it absolutely adored it and loved it. So, it, you know, it is each and everyone's own tastes and what is important in your own eye and what attracts you to something. I think I'm my harshest critic. That's the trouble. I 
I've added a little bit of white in here because I thought it would lighten it up and just give it that extra bit of sparkle. But the white wasn't an iridescent white. I wish I'd added some white mica powder to it to give it that iridescence because it was just a normal acrylic paint. And I, and I will do that again another time. I'll add some uh, mica powders to my paints. But at the moment, I'm using these Arteza iridescent paints, which I absolutely love. I put too much black down here. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just maybe put one dollop in. I try and counterbalance that with the white, but I would have probably been better off scraping that all off and then starting again. The bit on the right-hand side of the screen is the one that I really liked, and I liked the bit in the middle to have looked like that, but I just couldn't quite get it to look the same. Now, I want this to have some brush marks in it, even though when it goes into, when the resin goes onto it, those brush marks will disappear, but it gives a little sense of movement, and I wanted to try and see what that movement looked like before I covered it with the resin. But also, it helps to move the paint around as well. So as you can see, I'm not happy with that one there, so I'm trying desperately to get it to look like the other one, but I just can't seem to get it. But it blends, so it's quite nice. And then there's the final corner up the top here, which I think is a pink, and I'm using that as the base color. And I throw all the colors at this one. <laughs> I just thought, well, it's just a tiny corner. It's not really gonna go much else in anywhere else, so I thought that would look quite nice and bright. And now I'm just going through it again with some splashes. I wanted to get that sense of real movement. Perhaps I should have used a little bit less paint to splash this on with and a smaller brush, maybe a toothbrush or something like that, then flick the paint on. But I really do like the way this comes out and it does give that sense of, of movement that I was looking for on this. And that is what I had pictured in my head all the way right from thinking about these pictures was at the end I was going to do this. So I wanted to follow through to see how it looked. Well, there we go, that's finished now. I mean, it looks a bit of a mess because it's all splattered all around everywhere. But actually, I'm really starting to like this and I think the resin is going to make it pop. If you want to see what it turns out like with the proper resin over the top of it and all finished and how I stabilize a canvas to ensure that it takes resin without any dipping, then pop over to my other channel. I'll leave the link for it in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please boop the like button and also hit that subscribe button. It really does help me and it makes me smile as well if you want to get hold of anything that i've used then the links for it, everything is in the description below and please check out my videos that's coming up next on part of my journey on abstract painting